okay guys so welcome back again so from this video onwards we'll be doing a series on server setup and our server would be rock solid that is it would be production ready it is not only going to be a development server which could easily be spinned up in under 10 to 15 minutes but here the motive of this series is this that how do you actually create a production ready server that you can that you can actually use inside your production applications so it would cover a lot of things that is why do we actually want to use particular os for production ready servers why do we want to use ng Nginx as reverse proxy, why do we use let's encrypt cert bot to generate SSL certificates, how to automatically renew those SSL certificates and for this series only what I'm going to do is that that I'm going to deploy a Node.js application on this production ready server but instead the server is not only limited to Node.js. If you have an application in other programming languages like Python, like if you are having a Flask application or a Django application then you can use the same server setup and you can use your own applications also. It is not only limited to Node.js. JS. For the purposes of this tutorial series, I would be deploying a Node.js application here. So we would be covering a lot of things in this uh, video series that is we would be creating a droplet that is actually a server in DigitalOcean world. We would be deploying our Node.js application from Git. We would be using something called PM2 that is a process manager to automatically restart our application on failover and even it would persist the application on server reboots. Then we would be using Nginx as reverse proxy. We would be using Nginx as the load balancer also we won't be using pm2 for load balancing but instead we would be using nginx as the load balancer then we would be using a one module inside nginx that is gzip to compress our responses from the server then we would be making some changes to our ssh configuration we would be changing the default SSH port that is port 22. We would be also installing a firewall here. We would be installing fail to ban. We would make our server to have automatic updates. We would be setting time zone on our server and we would be using something called NTP to automatically synchronize the time from the internet. We would be providing no root access to our server. We would be creating an SSL certificate for our website. We'll be seeing that how to automatically renew those SSL certificates. We would be working with GitHub webhooks that is how to automatically deploy our application whenever you make changes to your applications we would be running our own systemd service to manage that webhook and there would be a lot more which we are going to do in this video so basically what we would be covering uh, now here in a, a very short uh, slide here uh, we would be creating a linux instance on digital ocean we would be creating the ssh keys and we would be taking all the basic security measures for securing our server like uh, which i've told you already that is the firewall ssh no root access fail to ban etc and then the node.js application would be running on nginx reverse proxy i've already told you that and then uh, we would be obviously securing our site with ssl by using let's encrypt insert bot including auto renewals and already told you that we would be doing automated deployments from github using webhooks so the Linux instance we would be using would be CentOS. Some people call it CentOS, but it is not pronounced like that. It is called CentOS. OS stands for operating system. And if you are wondering that why I'm not using an Ubuntu server. So what you can do, you can simply go to Google and search CentOS versus Ubuntu for server. And you will get the answer that why I'm using CentOS. Basically CentOS is a direct fork of our HEL that is Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So it is an enterprise grade server. So I always use CentOS as my production server so um, so if you want to know more about it simply search google about centos versus ubuntu for server and you will get the answer so the basic security principles which you would, we would be including in our server setup would be the secure and encrypted communication between the client and the server. We would be disabling root login and only allowing the sudo access. We would be disabling the password SSH logins. We would be changing the default SSH port that is 22 to something else like 2607 because most of the attacks that is the SSH attacks would be on port 22 and if the SSH service is blocked on port 22 then, then it would be highly unlikely that some Someone could guess or some bot can guess that on which port SSH is running. We would be removing the unused software which is coming as a bloatware inside our OS though typically CentOS does not contain any bloatware but still we would be removing whatever software which we are not using on our operating system. We would be only opening the required ports that are required by our application and by SSH. We would be setting up automatic updates. The, we would be also setting up the firewall configuration and we would be using something called uh, SE Linux that is security enhanced Linux and it is a feature of CentOS though I won't be talking much about SE Linux but still I would give you the command that you would need in a production ready server for servers enforcing SA Linux. 
So for those of you who do not have idea that is what reverse proxy is, that is because we are going to use Nginx as a reverse proxy for our N Node.js application. So basically Nginx sits in between the client and your Node.js applications. So we won't be directly exposing our Node.js application to the client or to the cloud, but instead the Node.js application, as we can see here that here we have two instances of our Node.js application, one running on port 4000 and one running on port 4001. So they are only confined to the lo uh, local host that is only nginx that is a local application would be able to access those applications running on port 4000 and 4001 the client would not be able to directly communicate to those applications that is the node application but instead the client would be connecting to our nginx server and in turn nginx would proxy those requests to the node applications and the response would be coming to the from the node applications to the nginx and then what nginx will do it will forward those responses to the client so nginx simply sits in between your node applications and your client so this is the basic idea of nginx reverse proxy so without wasting much time about talking about all the stuff here let's simply dive into code and let's see that how do we create a product ready server.